Hey everyone, and welcome back to SudaTac. Today I'm going to be showing you how to capture a WPA handshake using the AeroDump NG tool, or less specifically, the AirPrac NG Suite. Currently I'm using my laptop, which is already set up to do this. I'm in root mode, which you should be, unless you want to type sudo for all the commands. I've also put my wireless card into monitor mode, um, which I've outlined how to do basically in another video, which will have up in a card and also linked down in the description. Now, once you've got that set up and you've got your interface all figured out, in my case it's WLP12S0MON, then you should be good to go. So the command is fairly simple. We're just going to start out with arrow dump dash ng, and then followed by the name of the interface. So in my case, that's WLP12S0MON. And that'll go ahead and scan for all of the wireless networks and clients. It's basically just keeping track of all of the IPs that it sees and listing them right here in front of us. So this is all the information that a router would normally send out. It's just a bit more detailed because when you're connecting with your like phone or something like a computer, that's a little bit more user friendly. It usually doesn't give you all of this information. So as you can see over here, we've got the BSSID. You can also call this the MAC address of the router or access point. The power is just the range it is. So you want to, you oftenly want a lower power. As you can see, I'm fairly far away from any of the wireless networks. So it's fairly low. And the closer you get to zero, the stronger the power is. The beacons is basically the number of packets that it's collected. So that's another way to kind of judge the power and how easy it's going to be to get a handshake from a certain router. The data is also kind of a measure of the number of packets sent forth. This is kind of what you're going to want to be using if you're picking a target to select a handshake because the more of these, the more likely it's going to be able to find a handshake because it generally means that there's more users on that network. As you can see, the channel here is just the channel that it's operating on. Most 2.4 gigahertz networks will go on 6 or 11 or 1. Um, those are selected generally by routers because they have no interference with each other, whereas 8 and 5, for example, have some crossover in the frequency, so they can have more interference. The encoding over here is WPA2. Um, as you can see, some of these are open and some of these are WPA2. I don't have any WEP networks in range, but you might see those if they're available. You can also see what type of authentication they're going to be using. So we want to choose networks that use PSK. Um, if they're not going to be using PSK, then don't bother doing this. Finally, we have the ESSID, which is probably what we're most familiar with. It's just the name of the network. So as you can see, the network that I'm going to be getting a handshake for is this Misty Mountains 2.4 gigahertz. But as you can see, there's a lot of other ones in range. One last thing you should know is that you can press space to pause the output or resume the output. If you're going to be copying down something like a MAC address by just copying it from terminal, you might want to pause it because when it's resumed, it's kind of moving around and it's more difficult to copy things and harder to look at things. You can also just do control C, which will cancel it and it'll display the output right here. First of all, before we actually capture a handshake, it's important to understand what it actually is. A handshake is just a packet that you're capturing that goes between the client that's trying to access an access point and the router or access point itself. The handshake is going to include the key, which is the password for the wireless network, but it's going to be hashed so we can't read it directly. However, we can capture these and save them onto our computer for later use and we can unhash them by just testing a lot of hashes against them and ultimately cracking the password. Now with that said, it's important to note that you shouldn't really be doing this on any other people's networks. Depending on your area, it might be illegal or it may not be illegal. Regardless of the rules in your area, just keep in mind that it is someone's personal property and you shouldn't be tampering with it, so just make sure to do this on your own network. To capture a handshake and save it, it's fairly simple. We're just going to do air dump dash ng and then the monitor, and then we're going to use the flag w to indicate what file we're going to write to. If you run this command multiple times with the same name, it'll just add a number to the end so that you don't get mixed up. Um, but we're going to do test. Just for example, it can really be anything. Press enter, and it'll start doing the same thing, but this time it'll capture any handshakes. Now, hopefully under optimal circumstances, we'd get a handshake, and up by the date and the time it lapsed and things like that, you should see it say that it'll say WPA handshake captured. Now, I'm going to try to connect my phone to the network that I'm currently trying to capture a handshake for, and it might work, or it may not. We're going to see. Okay, so I just connected my phone to the network, which is Misty Mountains 2.4 gigahertz. And as you can see, we did not get a handshake. And that's because if you see in the top left corner, we're actually switching channels and we're seeing a whole bunch of different networks. Now, in some cases, this will work if it matches up the timing correctly, but a lot of the time your wireless card isn't going to be looking on the correct network, the correct channel, to find it properly. This is the part where it's important to narrow down your results to hopefully get better results at capturing a wireless handshake. Let's go ahead and cancel the command and look into some of the other options. The easiest thing you can do is just set a permanent channel. To do this, just do dash C and the channel you want. 
Misty Buttons 2.4 GHz is on channel 6, so I'm going to do that. And if we do enter, as you can see, it's only going to look at APs that are on channel 6. Now this one up here is an exception, it's negative 1. These are hidden networks that we don't know anything about them besides their BSS ID. There are ways to look at this information, but we're not going to be getting into that in this video. So now I've got higher chances of actually capturing a handshake that's sent over a certain network, but we're going to make it a little bit simpler just to keep track of everything by isolating a single access point. Now you can check all of the options at aerodump-ng and just do it with nothing and it'll give you the help page, or you can do man, air, dump, ng, whichever you prefer. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of options. We're just going to be using one of them, and that is this one right here, which is the BSSID. So if we go back up to our list of access points, we can see here, here's the BSSID, so just go ahead and copy that. We can run the same command that we did before. I'm going to still keep the channel there, so it's locked on channel 6. Do BSSID, paste it, and then do enter, and it'll only see ones with that BSSID. As you can see, we've isolated Misty Mountain's 2.4 GHz, so hopefully if anyone connects to it, we'll capture a handshake. I'm going to turn the Wi-Fi off and back on on my phone, connect to it, and just like that, you can see we captured a WPA handshake up in the top. It shows the MAC address of the access point, which is important in case you're monitoring a couple different channels or a couple different access points, which we did in the last step. So now it should be written to the file that we decided to write to. I'll show you that in a little bit. But I'd like to point out down here, we can see all of the different clients that are also connected to that access point. Right now there's seven, but that can change over time. And a couple of them have a little bit more information than others, but that's not really important. We're going to be using this in the next step to try to force a client off of an access point and get it to automatically reconnect, to therefore give us a handshake. So if we cancel the command and then do DIR, as you can see the last one, which is test3, we've got here. The file with the handshake is the .cat file, and as you can see, we've got our previous tests, which show up anyway, but the only one with the handshake is the test-03.cat. Now, if you're having issues capturing a WPA handshake and you don't have a device that's able to connect to a network, you may want to try to deauthenticate a device that's currently on the network. I'm going to go back into the aerodump. Instead of calling it test, I'm going to call it D, because we're going to deauthenticate a user of the network. Um, and as you can see, they're rolling in. We've got a couple of different clients connected to the access point. We're going to first be setting out a general kind of standard deauthentication packet, which is just going to try to boot everyone off the network, no matter what. But if that doesn't work, which often it won't, you can be a little bit more specific by specifying the individual client by the station, which is right here. So we're going to do Control shift t to open up a new tab in Terminal. The command we're going to be using here is AirPlay with an E for some reason. Um, and this one, if we just do it again, we can see the man page of, and it's got a whole bunch of different things. The one we're going to want to use is the deauthentication one, and that's dash zero. Now, AirPlay is pretty easy to use. Just do AirPlay dash ng. The first thing we're going to do dash zero, because as we discussed, that's to deauthenticate a user. Um, there's a couple of different things you can do here. So you can do five, and that'll do it five times. That's often a good enough stretch to just boot a client off. One might work. You could try it. Zero will just do it continuously, which I find the easiest, and then you can manually cancel it. There are two things we want to use. There's dash A, which is the access point, and dash B, which is the client that we're specifically trying to deauthenticate. The B is optional, but we're going to need an access point. So we're going to do it there. We're going to try this first, and then we're going to enter the interface, which is WLP12S0MON in my case. And as you can see, it's sending deauthentications to that. Now you should see some lost frames if you come back over here, um, and that'll just indicate that it's not able to authenticate. And the idea behind this is that most clients will automatically re-authenticate with an AP that they've previously authenticated with if they're just suddenly booted off, which will give us a handshake. So I'm just going to restart this, and as you can see, just like that, we got a WPA handshake because they're trying to reconnect. If you don't have that, try to cancel the deauthentication if you're doing it like zero times or infinite times as it is, and that might give them a little bit more time to re-authenticate. Now if none of that is working, you can specify a specific client, so that would be what you'd get here. And we can go back up and do dash b, paste that, enter, and then it'll send it to a specific client, which will hopefully start losing frames. It doesn't seem like it's sending many frames. That one's sending many frames right now, so I can't lose them. So that only has an effect on the specific client, which can be a really good thing, because if someone's like, oh gee, I don't have internet suddenly, they check that the person next to them does, they're going to be like, oh, it must be an issue with my device, which is kind of handy. You can find your handshakes in the whatever you named it.cat file, and that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.